I want to believe. Hey cats, it's Ed Fox Mulder Bud here, along with Beast Scully. Today we're going to examine the unexplained uppers, the unbelievable outsoles, and those mysterious midsoles. Are they fact or fiction? Welcome to the first ever episode of The Shoe Files. Hey cats, thanks for joining us here on Ed Bud Running Shoe Reviews, it's always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please think about hitting that subscribe button and also clicking the bell below for notifications when I roll those new videos out for you. It also helps the channel out a huge amount if you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. Thanks very much. So the shoe files, we're going to explore some recent shoe images and discuss whether they're fact or fiction. It's a bit like the X-Files, but with even higher production values. So first up today is the Ultra Boost 23. Already? Really? It was only a few weeks ago when I reviewed the Ultra Boost 22, but already we've got some images of the 23. Apparently, a crazy follow-up, or is it? Can this insane gargantuan boost wedge be real? The midsole for stars appears to be back to that old style boost where you've got the sort of bobbly bits on the outside. It's a technical term, guys. Certainly more in line with something like the Ultra Boost 4 that would have been released in about 2018. Looks more like a Rice Krispie cake if you've ever had one of those. Certainly moving back to the original Ultra Boost aesthetics. Though the midsole mass here has more height than a double decker bus on a tour round Hampstead. I mean, when this released, everybody was kind of overwhelmed with how much boost there was underfoot. But actually, when you think about it, it's not really that much different to any other running shoe. It just seems to cup around the heel a little bit, just for some stability. Yeah, you know, the Alpha Fly kind of broke down that barrier, didn't it? of super height and well the prime x as well a redesigned midfoot cage appears on the lateral medial side to this one and a very prominent plastic support around the heel i think most striking difference here is the split midsole at the back of the shoe in the heel and a very different outsole rubber pattern underfoot perhaps almost going back again to the original ultra boost it looks a little bit more like that there is the presence of a torsion type system here which seems to sort of spread round with these sort of arms to the back of the shoe probably provide a little bit of rigidity and even a bit of snap perhaps it's even the new version of the LEP system that is appearing on that solar boost 5 that adidas have just rolled out to members the torsion plate looks quite similar actually to that on the adios 6 i reviewed well quite a while ago now so how legit is this leak is this like a hoax you know where molder would drive out to some remote location and it for all to just be a person dressed up in a rubber suit or something. I reckon it's a good 10 out of 10 official one here. It certainly has all the hallmarks of an Ultra Boost update, but we're going to probably have to wait until the very end of this year to find out for sure. It's certainly like an extended play double album version of the Ultra Boost, isn't it? You've got the gatefold sleeve, maybe some postcards inside as well, and the lyric sheet. Don't forget the lyric sheet. Will this version win over the fans though that have been left wanting? Without enough four foot boost, I think people just want it underfoot rather than around the foot. Certainly more in the heel and forefoot areas there, though that huge protrusion in the heel was really necessary. Perhaps it is a vital inclusion to boost the performance. I think it's probably just to make it look better. Well, some people might say so. It certainly does seem to be gravitating towards looking like a hoka shoe though, doesn't it? Who knows, people, who knows? Let me know in the comments if you think it's a genuine 100% official Ultra Boost model. It certainly is wild and wacky, and it does remind me a little bit of the mid-90s show Shooting Stars. In fact, pretty much everything at the moment reminds me of the 90s. Our second mystery today on the shoe files is the Adidas Majambo. Now this image popped up a little while ago on Instagram. It looks kind of wild, doesn't it? The upper certainly has resemblance there to the Adios Pro 2 from Adidas. In fact, I think it is, in fact, that upper. It looks almost identical. But of course, in the back there, it does clearly state it's the Adidas Majambo. It's like a midsole block, isn't it? It reminds me a little bit of like a huge block of ice, maybe some clay where you sort of chop pieces off and sort of mold the thing into what you want it to be. Certainly prototype stuff. I don't think this is a shoe that you would actually wear. Although when I first saw that poker, is it the 10-9? 
I didn't think that was real, but it was. Like I say, maybe a slab of clay or a block of ice, and it's shaped and sculpted to show perhaps how the shoe midsole could look. On top of that, it could be like an upper test, I suppose, something that they place the upper onto to see if it's going to look right, see if it fits correctly. I think the Instagram user Absolute China posted this one up and mentioned it could have some sort of GPS recording. There are some pictures there that associate it with the Garmin Connect IQ app. It looks as if it could ask for some sort of access to certain sensors. I did do a little bit more digging about this shoe though and it turns out that the Majambo name was actually given to the original Adios Pro by some of the people testing it out. It's Swahili slang for something new, that's basically what it means. Thus, I think this is merely just the name of the original Adios Pro from Adidas. Here it is, the Adi Zero Adios Pro original. This is the shoe that got me closest to a sub 130 half marathon last year. Interesting to see the Pro 2 though appearing with that Majambo name. This is clearly the shoe that it was based on at least. Getting it in hand though, it's surprisingly different to the Adios Pro 2 that we've got now. I mean, the huge cutout section that you've got without the exposed energy rods certainly was a shoe that just worked for me at all sorts of paces absolutely outstanding did they take a backward step perhaps with the adios pro 2 maybe let's speculate a little bit now guys perhaps this shoe was like a sort of pre-carving of the prime x maybe they were testing out some different ideas and they just wanted to get some foam there and then they could chop pieces off perhaps or maybe it does actually feature some sort of gps technology built into that block it does look a bit like something you might find in cyberpunk 2077 which seem to be saying every single week at the moment perhaps it might contain some stride pod like features you know monitoring cadence in a more accurate way perhaps there's even a wind sensor in there it'd certainly be useful today it's absolutely blowing a gale out there right now i'm staying in here maybe a bit of running later if it dies down those app permissions do mention gps location sensor data heart rate and also a compass as well very odd strange stuff going on here i reckon that this shoe may have been some sort of prop or very early prototype perhaps they're experimenting with a few ideas and they just had some of those uppers and chucked it on top i can't see it being anything else adidas have been refining their midsoles over the last few iterations cutting back the light strike pro just to the barest of bare minimum i think that's improved the flexibility of the shoes a little bit but also lowered the weight that's the big thing that's the difference between the next percent and the Adi Zero line, everything's just a little bit lighter with the Nike shoes. I think this one's firmly a hoax. I don't believe it to be a real shoe. I just think it's some sort of prototype and they slap that name on there that was originally used by the runners to refer to the Adios Pro. What do you think though, guys? I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments below. Just like Mulder, I've got more questions now than answers. That was pretty much the end of every episode of the X-Files, wasn't it? I better drive all the way back from Oregon now and sit in my office and stare at the poster with the UFO. More mystery midsoles and obscure outsoles very soon. We must ask ourselves, are they really hoaxes? Are these really running shoes? Or are we being lied to? A musical interlude for you. I'm not sure it's the danger of the storm here in the UK at the moment, but I'd gone back to listening to Modest Mouse in one of their earlier albums. We were dead before the ship even sank. Released in 2007 by all accounts, seems like ages ago now. The band here meet up with Johnny Marr on guitar and there's fireworks. Everybody knows the track Dashboard, absolutely fantastic angular Jaguar guitar playing on there. I really love the production and the overall sound on the track Little Motel. It's got a wonderful character to it, it sounds really open. The drums not too tight, the effects just sprinkled on, just enough there. There's such a range of tunes here as well, from the manic, totally insane, invisible, to the sort of more pared down harmonies of Miss the Boat. Singer's just got such a range of different deliveries, I think it keeps you on your toes. We Were Dead Before the Ship Even Sank by Modest Mouse. Thanks for joining me for today's episode guys, always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when we roll out those new videos for you. And it really helps us out if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.